Um, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here today. I thank the organizers for the invitation. And I will address the question of compliance and as a factor of efficacy in the intervention with patients with malnutrition. Well, when you address the subject of compliance, you have to make the patient feel that this treatment will help him or her to get what they want. And what do older adults want? Well, they want to stay at home uh, as long as possible with as less disability as possible. So how many older adults do stay at home? Well, actually, a vast majority of older persons stay at home for a very long time. The French public data show that in older adults older than 65 years, 96% of men and 93% of women live at home, and this is where they want to stay. It's important to notice that at the age of 80, only 4 to 5% of uh, older adults are in institutions, but it's not so good at 95 years of age, where 27 to 42% are in institutions. So if they want to live at home and stay at home, they uh, need to be not hospitalized, uh, because the hospital is the perfect setting to develop disability. And we know that 30 to 60% of disability occurs or worsens in the setting of medical hospitalization. So how can nutrition uh, help in not being hospitalized? The first study I will show you is this observational studies where GPs included free living malnourished older adults, age more than 70, and started ONS prescription or not according to their own practice. So the population uh, was included, and the, both groups were the same for age, 83-year-olds. For uh, women, 64%, BMI, 21.5, which is really low when you know that the mean BMI for this population at home is usually 26 to 27. And also, they had lost a lot of weight because they were included and recognized as malnourished only when they had lost 10% of their own weight. So it's um, a late care, late screening for malnutrition. So the, um, the, uh, the groups were compared also between ONS prescription or no ONS prescription. And you see that the patients that received ONS were more likely to be disabled had a poorer um, perception of their own health on a scale to uh, 0 to 10, 3.6. They had lower quality of life, and they had also a very low appetite because uh, they um, had only 2.9 on 10 on the appetite uh, scale. So the GPs chose to prescribe ONS to the poorer health um, uh, older adults. So when you look at compliance to ONS, actually I feel it was pretty good. 48% of the subject uh, reported uh, taking 100% of uh, the ONS, and the ONSs were actually weighed. And uh, up to 29% uh, uh, took between 75 and 99% of the ONS. And then only 10% took less than 50% of the ONS. What's very interesting to uh, notice, and it really is in accordance with previous studies, is when you prescribe ONS, uh, appetite actually increases. You must not be afraid to prescribe ONS because people have low appetite. They will actually improve their appetite with uh, ONS. So you see that ONS was lower in, um, appetite was lower in the ONS group at baseline, and then after an intervention, appetite was about the same as in the no ONS group. 
And then we studied the likelihood of hospitalization, first compared the group with ONS and then with the group with no ONS. And you see that the ONS was prescribed to poorer health older adults. And so that was associated with an increased risk of hospitalization. But in the other hand, when ONS was prescribed, the higher the compliance, the lower the risk of hospitalization. So it's important to uh, see here, if you have more than 40, uh, 400 calories per day that were taken, so you lowered the risk of hospitalization here. If you had more than 30 grams of protein, and the best was for more than 500 calories per day versus lower than that threshold. The second study I will show you is this is a randomized control study. And the, it was interesting because the intervention group was both ONS and high level, really dense ONS, 600 calories and 30 grams of protein, plus dietary advice. And the control group was dietary advice alone. They were followed up for 12 weeks and uh, they included um, 300 uh, free living malnourished older adults also. The age was a bit younger than in the uh, previous study, 72, and the BMI was really low at 19.4. Compliance to ONS there also was very good as uh, assessed by the amount consumed as a proportion of that prescribed and it was 80% uh, in the ITT analysis and a bit better, of course, in the per-protocol analysis, 83%. And a bit surprisingly, the compliance to uh, dietary advice was poorer as uh, assessed by the percentage of persons reporting making dietary changes. It was 66% only in the DA group and in the ONS plus DA group, it was only 43%. That means that maybe when the patients were taking the ONS, they felt that they did enough effort to change their lifestyles and didn't really apply the uh, dietary advice. So this was really uh, effective in increasing energy and protein intake. and. Um, when you uh, compare it, uh, the ONS plus DA was better than dietary advice alone. And gain uh, 436 calories per day and 19 grams of protein, which is uh, very interesting. It's also interesting to note that the group that uh, was in the DA group only also uh, wanted to uh, have ONS and they cheated a little bit to take them. Another point that's interesting too is that there were fewer dropouts in the ONS plus DA group, which means they were um, more motivated to follow the study than the DA group alone. Maybe they felt that DA was not medical enough or something and they just dropped uh, more like 16 versus 25 percent. And the implications in terms of hospitalizations well, you can look especially in the PER protocol where uh, patients actually took the ONS and you see that it reduced emergency admissions significantly and when they were in the hospital, they also reduced the length of stay. So this is what you can use for data to convince community dwelling older adults to actually um, take uh, the, the uh, medical treatment for nutrition. But that also leads to the question of uh, the efficacy of dietary advice, food fortification and snacks on food intake. And I have found uh, five meta-analyses and reviews of literature. You see they included four to 16 studies. The settings were home, nursing home or hospital. And um, you see that uh, the um, the gain in energy and protein was very different from one study to another, and it could be as low as 100 calories and 4 grams of protein to uh, 700 calories and 16 grams of protein. 
The thing is that these interventions are not very protocoled and they are very different with different comparators. So there is a substantial statistic heterogeneity. However, uh, dietary advice is also individualized intervention, low cost and can be done for long duration, but it must not uh, be excluded from nutritional care. On the contrary, you probably must uh, associate ONS and dietary uh, advice. When you look at the literature, the compliance to ONS is much better in the community than the hospital. In the community, of course, these were uh, older adults that agreed to participate in a clinical trial. It's difficult to know exactly what is compliance uh, in real life. I feel that when I prescribe ONS to older patients in my consultation, well, some of them will say, okay, this is not for me, really. But once uh, they are okay with it, the others, they usually take it quite well, and uh, the co uh, compliance uh, is pretty good, I feel, especially as I am a geriatrician, and I know that compliance to drugs, for example, is really poor, and we know that only half of our older people take the pills exactly as prescribed. So compliance to ONS is good. In the hospital, things are a bit more complicated. The patients are under stress, and uh, they have very low appetite, so uh, it's a bit understandable that compliance will be a bit lower. So we try to uh, prevent hospitalization, but sometimes it happens. And when it happens, we really get a full model, perfect model to create uh, malnutrition, disability, muscle loss. There is low mobility, so uh, your um, muscle just shrinks. There's low appetite, no food intake, no protein intake. That's really bad for the muscle too. And most of the time, there is inflammation, which will uh, aggravate and um, uh, muscle loss. So this increases very much the risk of complications and also the risk of hospital-acquired disability. And uh, I said that um, 30 to 60 percent of older people worsen or um, get dis disabled in the hospital. It is usually thought that um, anorexia and low food intake is inevitable in the hospital because of all I just said, but the effort study just proved that is wrong. It is possible to improve food intake even in the early days of hospitalization with a protocol-guided individualized nutritional support defined by specialist dietitians. But this is much effort. It uh, means to take into account food preferences, fortification, snacks, and ONS. They also use multivitamins and especially monitoring every 25 to 24 to 48 hours. It's interesting to note that among the 2,000 uh, patients that were included, tube feeding was only um, used for eight persons and parenteral feeding only for 12. And you see here in the, the bars here, this is the percentage of persons that reached their uh, requirements during uh, the first days of hospitalization and blue is the control group and pink bars are intervention. And you see that even in the first, second, third, fourth day, the percentages of uh, patients reaching requirements is much increased with the intervention. You gain 2,090 calories and 10 grams of proteins per day. And this is a clinical consequences because it lowers complications and lowers significantly also death in the hospital. So we can do something, just we have to organize ourselves. Once the hospitalization is over, the uh, important thing is to uh, prescribe nutritional care, ONS, post-discharge. And it's been shown that this will help the patient not coming back to the hospital, because otherwise we really come into a vicious circle with malnutrition and disability and disease. 
So our main problem is low appetite in older people. So what can we do? It's really hard to eat when you're feeling full all the time or you feel nauseous or you feel disgust with the food. So we have to um, really think about all that will help this person eat. And the factors affecting ONS compliance can be classified into three categories, like um, patient-related factors, therapy, like ONS-related factors, and healthcare system and economic factors. Well, there are things we cannot do much about, like the age of the patient or his educational le level, but there are some things we can do with physical disabilities to take the ONS properly. If there is no family support, we have to um, address the subject of uh, health uh, professionals to help them eat. Forgetfulness and low motivation, we have talked about loss of appetite. Some medication affect the patient's sense of taste, but it's not always easy to uh, stop a pill or drug that uh, the person needs in case it will modify his appetite. And uh, also there are symptoms from disease that might um, lower the compliance. Of course, all industrials are working on uh, how to make uh, the ONS more satisfactory. Uh, the, the, the older persons will not take it very well if they're monotonous and unsatisfactory flavor, if they're really ilk, but they are not anymore. <laughs> you have to uh, not give large volumes and portions because they are afraid they will not uh, be able to finish it. They don't like powder supplements. If the duration of the, um, the treatment is long, they will get tired of it. You don't have to change it too much also. Some will say they do not tolerate oral nutritional nutrition, and especially the lack of knowledge about the benefits of nutritional care. This is very important how the health giver, health um, caretaker just uh, announces what is useful in the ONS. And uh, in the last, this has to be uh, managed at the uh, a scale of the healthcare system, lack of accessibility, difficulty in getting prescription, being reimbursed, costs, and sometimes long waiting time. Compliance can be improved with high density, low volume formats, good flavors, and uh, also the characteristic of the ONS, but also it's important to insist on healthcare professional attitude when they are prescribing them, personal envi environment that will help the patient um, take their supplements. And if we look at a systematic review of 46 studies, it appears that compliance is better with really highly dense ONS. Just to take home messages, every calorie and grams of protein count, so we have to improve compliance. The first message is, even if appetite is low, prescribe energy and protein-dense ONS and prescribe more than 400, 500 calories, 600 calories, more than 30 grams of protein in a variety of taste and texture. They will choose themselves. It will improve food intake, appetite and outcome. You may add food fortification, snacks, sensory quality and variety, physical activity, of course, and remember that if there is no effect on weight, you must consider enteral nutrition. Thank you for your attention.